if you're modeling for the first time and you don't know much about light fixtures, just remember you need to plan ahead. You have to work with your designer, your builder, or if you're doing it on your own yourself, you have to think about where the light source, the bulb or the shade, where it exists on the fixture, and then you place it accordingly on the wall. Space out every six to eight feet. I don't know what the hell's going on here. We walked into the space and we're really challenged. There's no lighting for us at all. What do yep. we do? There's no lighting in here. I mean, we can look at adding can light, but for the family to move in immediately, we're looking at task lamps, floor lamps. How do we get the natural light to be you know, at the forefront? What else would you think about, Teal? Well, yeah, we're super challenged with lighting in here because there isn't a J box in place or any electrification for any lighting. So anything we do has to be a wall hung sconce that plugs in. And as you said, floor lamps and surround lighting until they want to invest in the next step. So something we like to think about when we're approaching a project is you don't come in and rip everything out. It's good counsel for yourself and for us to give the client to start slowly, try to live with some of the items that you have and decide later what you want to change out. Lighting is a big deal. This light has a lot of character. The shadows are really fun. It's a great accent to the wallpaper and we thought, eh, let's leave it and see if it can be a fun accent to start with. So in this case, we're informing the client that they update this light fixture. There's not much we can do with this to make it of the times today, unless maybe we took a really high gloss, fun colored paint and tried to do that and then update it with some new bulbs. So the client really wanted to keep this chandelier and at first we were like, eh, it's pretty dated, but there are things that you can do to make it up to date and be able to live with it for many, many, many more years. There's hope, the client wanted to keep it and I think the two things that date it the most and make it not a soothing light fixture is obviously, duh, the light bulbs. You know how crazy I am about light color temperature and the frosted bulb, 2700 Kelvin, and then change out these weird 1300 fake wax dripping situations, remove the light, take it to your local light specialist and get these areas updated. We've got a real situation. So again, we've taken the wallpaper off from this room and that's why the floor is prepped. It's getting ready for smooth coat, sanding, and prepping for paint. But we got other problems. This room has no lighting. Again, an old house. There's no central fixture in the ceiling. These are knob and tube sconces on the wall that, you know, I don't know, it, only one of them works. So we're gonna advise to the client that they need to update the wall sconces. There's lots of options. This room can get more light. Number one, Wendy and I would suggest, make sure you have two sources of light because that's your only hope in lighting this room up. Next step would be bedside table lamps. So with a sconce on the wall, it's a statement. It's something that really anchors the look of your room. And if you look in this space, you can see we also have light fixtures that drop down that are next to the sconce. And they're not currently speaking to each other. They're different styles and they're not working well together. So we've got to solve for that too. So you can either put can lights in here and let the sconces tell a story, or you can select fixtures, flush mount pendants or flush pendants that talk to your sconces, but something's got to Something's got to change. <laughs> come through here after. Can you do a pan like this so you get really up close with it? Yeah. Okay. What am I saying? Come on, buddy. Three, two, one. And back. Wait, what did I just say? So if you're in a raw space like this, the most important things to think about are light placement, light height, and where your light switches go because those are the type of things that people forget before the drywall goes up, while they're putting the plumbing in is the same time that they're electrifying. Walk through the home. A little trick that designers and builders do is they put either spray paint or blue tape on the floor and you can actually space out every six to eight feet your can package down the hallway. So you're doing a four inch, a six inch, an eight inch can, go four inch, 2700 Kelvin. And space them out six or eight feet apart. Every house, every space is different. The ceiling height is different. The width of the hallway is different. So I can't tell you exactly how far to place them apart, but the best thing to do is to get in your space and work with your electrician 
Do you think I should put them two feet apart or should I put them eight feet apart? And I bet you'll figure out that you need to do it somewhere in between. I also don't like to walk into a space and have the focal point be the light switches. In your mind, think about hiding your light switches. Put them in places that are gonna be user friendly so when it's pitch black, you can walk into your house and turn on your can lights, but also put them in a place that don't take up the wall. Makes sense. Explore technology, folks. You can use your phones to turn on your lighting remotely before you even get home. Super exciting. So something that's happening in this area that we are in a major before moment is the skylights. There are skylights littered all the way up and down this entire roof line. We've got a four by four, which is huge, folks. A skylight over the stairwell, and we have a skylight in every bedroom and in every bathroom. It looks pretty dark now, but just wait until the after. So we're here at Firehouse. There's lots going on here. When you're in a raw state or when you're in a remodel or when you're down to the studs, it's like it should be a dream for you because it gives you the open floor plan and the open walls to access, to achieve. And that's such a great word. Yeah, it's a to, blank canvas. It's achieving the lighting that you actually want to have. Yeah. It's really fun to think about the space and how you live in it and how you can accent your room with lighting. So yeah. like- The owner of this house, he's an artist. And so I'm imagining where do we put a little task light over a blank wall where he can showcase his art. Right behind us is gonna be a bar. It's gonna be a spotlight going onto some of his art. Like bathrooms, you know, you want your sconces to look balanced with your mirror. So you need to plan for that with your electrician and in your drawings of where those light fixtures are going to go before you execute and put drywall and, and people paint. forget it has to happen early. You have to put your electrical in place that we'll talk to you. height and location, the height and location of future lights. Mm -hmm. So that's what's really cool about right now is we are going to be planning for lighting, locations, heights. You need to know where your light fixtures are going, which means you need to know what light fixture you're going to be purchasing. Such a good point. And you have to make sure your electrical is dialed and that your plans outline and give a specific layout for your plan. Of where they go. It's called the lighting schedule. One thing that people do not think about at this stage, which is so exciting, this is such a great expert tip, is your, where your light switch plates are. I love to put a light switch plate around a corner that still serves the space. And my favorite thing that the electricians hate me for is they love to put them all stacked together and they want to kill me. A lot of times light switches are called two gangs, meaning two switches. And I like to put like a six gang on and I like to label, this is the overhead, this is the hall sconce, this is the hall can lights, this is the pendant light, because it keeps all of your lighting in one location that can obviously be accessed in another location, all at a three way, even though it's a two way, it makes no sense. But you can have light switches that talk to each other, but it's so important that switch locations also should happen early on because those lights are electrified and planned and they talk to the switch plate. Mm -hmm. Thing of what needs to happen, and I just feel really confined to this chair. I want to get up and show you like where the switch plate should go. Four inch round pants. I guess we're not talking about it in a lawn chair. I don't know. Between the age. <laughs> <laughs>